Two weeks in Europe with just one carry-on and a backpack? Can it really be done? Stay tuned to find out. Hi, I'm Jennifer, owner of Canopy of Stars Travel. And as a reformed overpacker, I'm here to tell you that yes, you can get everything you need for two weeks in Europe into a carry-on and a backpack. Now, if this is your first time here, go ahead and drop a hi in the comments below so we can welcome you to our community. And if you've been here before, hit that subscribe and bell notification so you know when we release new information. One of the questions people always ask is, why would I want to travel so lightly through Europe? Well, it probably goes without saying, but traveling through Europe is very different than traveling through the United States. When you are traveling through Europe, you may be boarding trains or planes to get from location to location, and traveling lightly will really allow you to get on and off of those me methods of transportation really easily. Another thing to think about is a lot of the buildings in historical parts of Europe are retrofitted to be things like hotels, and a lot of them do not have elevators at all. Their ground floor is where the lobby is, Floor number one, which is one story above that, is where the rooms start. So whatever luggage you bring, you will be having to bring up and down stairs. Let me give you an example. My husband and I were taking the train from Rome to Sorrento. And we went up to the platform. There was a gentleman getting off of the train. He first took off his carry-on and a backpack, put the backpack on, the carry-on was beside him. And then we watched as he helped bring off four more large pieces of luggage. Well, I initially thought this is a family man. He's got maybe multi-generation. They were all going together. As it turned out, he was traveling with just his girlfriend. That's right. His girlfriend had packed four large pieces of luggage and he was traveling lightly. And we heard them as they were walking down the platform. They were actually going to walk from the train station to their hotel in Rome. Now we've already discussed the fact that Europe has lots and lots of historical parts. And while the streets being lined in cobblestone sounds romantic and quaint, and to be honest, it really is, unless you're having to wrangle four large pieces of luggage. And in reality, it doesn't matter if you have one large piece of luggage that you're trying to carry or four, those cobblestones and having to carry it up the street or up the stairs is still going to affect you. That is why at Canopy of Stars Travel, we recommend that all of our travelers going to Europe pack light. But how do you do it? Intentionality and a capsule wardrobe. What is a capsule wardrobe and how can it help you get through two weeks in Europe in just your carry-on? A capsule wardrobe is a series and set of clothes that are all mix and match based on a color palette. For example, you can see my color palette is black, white, tan, and denim, which meant if it wasn't those colors, it was not going in my bag at all. However, if you are a colorful, bright person, change these, make it be what you need. Maybe instead of tan, you're gonna have hot pink or turquoise in your wardrobe. So you can see that every single thing, all the way down to my nightie, believe it or not, as well as my shoes, fit within this capsule wardrobe. Again, if it wasn't in that wardrobe colors, it wasn't going in my bag. Let me tell you what I brought. First, I did bring this dress, two purses, one scarf, five shirts, one sweater, four pairs of pants, three jackets. Now, one of the things we always encourage our clients to do is check the weather before you travel. And I checked and about eight hours before we were scheduled to uh, depart from the airport, I switched some things out. A cold snap had come through Italy. I took out my uh, short sleeve shirt and substituted a long one. Again, because this is a capsule wardrobe, it was really easy to make those change and those basics. Um, originally, I had a beautiful tan trench coat decided I was gonna leave that at home and instead put in my puffer jacket. Let's go through these one at a time and talk about them. First is the shirts. I had two white, one black and white stripe and two black. Not exciting, incredibly functional. 
The first one I brought was a sleeveless from Talbot's and I really loved this one. This one is actually reversible. It has a V neck on this side. It has a scoop neck on this side and it came in really handy. There was a day I was eating pistachio gelato and got a little bit on my shirt. Um, I did not have time to wash my clothes before the next time I needed to wear this, but I was able to flip it around and with a layering piece on the back, nobody noticed it. There was also a white um, shirt again from Talbot's. It is a V-neck. This is also from Talbot's. It's from their tee by Talbot's. It's part of their athleisure wear. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, how and where I wore this. Up next is an Unbound Merino wool shirt. I love their products and wool, real wool travels really well. It doesn't hold on to smells. It washes quickly. It dries um, quickly. And I really loved it as a layering piece. The only thing is um, it is an extra large because that's what size I needed for my girls. And the armholes were a little bit big. So if you are going to be looking into this, um, if the girls can handle it, go down a size because of the armholes. But fantastic layering piece. And then the black long sleeve v-neck so everything in here could go with everything else the sweater that i brought was black and ecru and was really nice i loved that um i was able to put this over pieces so i could put it over the unbound merino i could put it over a white shirt to stay warm and then when it got or to say yeah warm and then it was warmer in the afternoon because it does have sleeves and it's not a vest i was able to take it off um you could tie it around your waist or around your neck, but I found that tying it around my purse was actually really helpful. Not only did it kind of help hold it, but it also provided an extra layer of security on my purse. There were four pairs of pants. I did bring a pair of white jeans, and I know sometimes we think about traveling with white and that's a little bit intimidating. For me, I would look at my itinerary each day and see what I was doing and go, okay, do I think I can get through the day with white? I actually didn't have any issues. However, just a little hint or tip, you can get the tied um, little individual, like little pad things. I don't know, tied whites, that's what they're called. And you could get things off with that really easy. I brought a tan pair of pants, again, from Talbot's. They are their um, relaxed chino, that's my favorite. A pair of jeans. And you can see all of my things follow a similar silhouette. They're all kind of straight. And then I did bring one pair of athleisure wear. This is from Talbot's, it's their tee by Talbot's. Um, this is what I wore every day we flew. I put the pants with this shirt and then I used my uh, denim jacket as the cover over. And you can see that by having the capsule wardrobe, everything goes with everything. Um, Europeans do not wear athleisure like Americans do. So you're not gonna see them running around to go shopping in their Lululemons and a t-shirt. Um, if they're wearing athleisure wear, they are working out. If you wear those kinds of things, you will stand out as an American and a tourist in Europe. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing that, but I also wanted to be really comfortable on the plane, which is why the T by Talbot's, the pants, they kind of look like slacks. They're made out of that same buttery soft uh, material that feels like the athleisure wear. And those things on the plane were perfect because I felt like I was in pajamas. Next are three kind of over layering pieces to stay warm. I had a denim, or not a denim, I had a tan sweater. This is from Old Navy, a denim jacket that I've had for years and years and years. And then, like I said, I threw in my black puffer jacket to stay warm. Everything in here is a workhorse and really helpful. Let's talk about shoes though, because when you're going to Europe, you're going to be walking everywhere. And it's not going to be like here in America where you're on beautiful sidewalks or the lands or the roads are straight and flat. Part of the charm of going to Europe is seeing the, his the history there, which does mean cobblestone streets. So you need to be prepared. On the plane, I wore this pair of tennis shoes. They are from Vionic. I love Vionic. They're very supportive. They're wonderful. So these were my airplane shoes. And then the other pair of shoes that I packed. So I would give Vionic, I would give these a 9.5 out of 10. These loafers, I would give a 20 out of 10. These really turned out to be the most comfortable. Like those are super comfortable, but like these were even more comfortable and more supportive somehow. Um, these are made to pack. 
So you can see they, they bend right up. Um, so they're squishy, That they were easy to pack, super comfortable, and no joke, I walked 10 miles in these in Rome. Cobble, cobblestone streets, the Colosseum, catacombs, went all the places, and um, they were incredible. My feet never hurt. One thing to note, if you are interested in the Vionic loafers, go down a size. Uh, there's something about the way they make that need to go down a size. And another rule or another tip is when you are traveling and going to be walking that much, do not wait until the day before your trip to wear those shoes, get them broken in before you go. Okay, um, this is the scarf I brought. And a scarf can be really handy, especially if you're wearing a dress or something else that is uh, showing shoulders. When you go into the historical and religious sites like the Vatican or other chapels, you're gonna need to have your shoulders covered and that came in really handy. It also helped in the morning to stay warm. And then these are the two purses I brought. I kind of thought that I would get dressed up one night. My husband and I would go to dinner. So I had this dress and this purse. These are actually the only two things that I did not use on my trip to Europe. So next time I wouldn't uh, bring them. This is actually the purse that I used every day for two weeks. Got it on Amazon, wasn't super expensive. It sits right at your chest um, so that you can protect it when you're walking around so you don't have to worry about pickpocketers in those super touristy areas like Trevi Fountain or other places you may visit. I loved it, it held everything I needed for a day. So it held my tickets, my wallet, some Kleenex, which you will wanna bring with you if you're traveling through Europe. Not sure why, ask in the comments below. Um, it just was my everything. And like I said, when I was taking the sweaters and maybe got warm for the day, it was really easy to tie it to. Again, provided, oops, provided another level of, circ of security for the purse. I absolutely loved it. In addition to these items, I also brought socks, just a couple of pair because I knew I was gonna be doing laundry on the way as well as one extra bra and seven pairs of underwear. Part of traveling through Europe is being able to, again, that core wardrobe, but knowing how to wash or do laundry. Now, if you are staying at a hotel, maybe they do have a laundromat or you can find one as you're walking around, or maybe they'll do it for you. We actually opted to do our own laundry in the sink or even the bathtub. We did have to really think about where that was gonna be so our clothes would have time to dry. So if we started in one location and say we went to Rome, the first day we were in Rome would be when we washed our laundry. We actually used a laundry sheet. So there are sheets that you can get that is laundry detergent. When you put it in the water, it dissolves. Um, did it the first day we arrived in location so that our items would have time to dry while we were there. Um, obviously, the denim's gonna take a little bit longer to dry than the uh, merino shirt. So that is the capsule wardrobe. In addition to the clothes that you've seen here, jewelry was a part of my capsule wardrobe. But again, because we're condensing everything and everything needs to go with every other piece, it's a very mix and match lifestyle. These are the only earrings I brought. In fact, I wore them on the plane, wore them every day. These are Huggies by Kendra Scott. I love them, they were fantastic as well as this one necklace. These were brought with me because again, they went with every single thing, every neckline, it worked with every piece, so I wasn't bringing and putting additional pieces into my suitcase. But in addition to planning really well and being very intentional with your wardrobe, you have to consider how are you going to get the items there. Let me introduce you to Monos. Now, this is in no way sponsored. I spent my own money but I loved it. I was very, very pleased with these products. This is the Monos Metro backpack and the Monos carry-on bag. Um, the Monos carry-on bag is set and sized for European flights because carry-on bags for American and European flights are slightly different in this fit both. Um, it comes as a clamshell. So when you open it up, there are two sides. One has a zipper so you can close it up and the other, I loved this about it, had a compression so I could put all my things in there strap that down and it would compress it for me without me having to use compression cubes because I don't love those. Um, it worked beautifully on cobblestones. It was light and easy to get up and top or get up and onto and out of uh, trains and planes. So I really liked that. Um, 
The Monos Metro Backpack, one of the things I love about that is it does have the strap to hold on to the suitcase. Another thing I love about it is that it is waterproof. I don't know about y'all, but the carpet on an airplane grosses me out. So when I have to take my carry-on item, you know, this, the suitcase is the one that's gonna go above, this one's gonna go in the seat in front of me, on the ground, on the carpet. One of the things I love about that is that this material is um, waterproof. So as soon as I got to the hotel, I took a washcloth, got it damp and kind of wiped it all off so that I felt better. I don't know if it really made any difference, but it made me feel better. Um, my husband actually used a different suitcase and we both agreed that this one is far superior. One other thing I want to point out about the suitcase is um, it is ergonomic, which means the button to raise and lower the handle is on the underside. Again, found it very easy to use, very easy to get through airports um, and train stations with this, very easy to get it you know, on the train above my seat and get everything the way it needed to be. Can't say enough good stuff about this. I loved it. Last tip. When you are trying to go to Europe for two weeks and get everything in one carry-on, do not start comparing yourselves and looking around and going on Amazon. I guarantee you, you'll find something that you'll order with at the last minute and think, this has to go in my bag. If you've waited and you didn't think about it until that long, it is not something that's gonna need. And in fact, it will derail your plan. Some of the worst purchases I have made have been that 24 hours before I was supposed to leave. So skip that intentionality and a capsule wardrobe. If you will do those two things, you will be very successful in getting through two weeks at Europe with nothing but your carry-on and a backpack. If you have questions, maybe about the luggage or maybe about a capsule wardrobe and how to make that really work for you, or even the accessories we brought, like our adapters, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see a video on that information, let me know that as well. Canopy of Stars Travel is a boutique agency specializing in custom curated luxury vacations. And we would love to help you in your trip to Europe, not only with packing, but listening to your wants and needs, desires, those things that we can really help you with. Consider us your matchmaker. Whether you want to stay in a sleek and modern place in Rome, or you're looking for an 11th century villa in Tuscany, we are here to help. Reach out to us and we would love to help you plan your vacation. I wish you well, I wish you safe and happy travels, and I can't wait to see you under a canopy of stars.